Hey guys, we're on another adventure today and you can see the gorgeous mountains around me. We are, well, I'll tell you what we're gonna do and the special guest that we have with us in just a minute. Okay guys, we are taking this special guest camping with us this weekend. Here he is. Say hi to Jack. Hi to Jack. Yeah. <laughs> They're supposed to say hi to Jack. Oh yeah, well yeah. you say hi to Jack. Right, right, right. Hi to you. There you go. He has been featured in this video right here uh, when Bonnie and I visited them, uh, visited family in Kansas City. So we are headed to Seward today. We're taking this get up behind us here to Seward and we're just gonna go camping. We're gonna try our hand at fishing a little bit. Um, and Jack and I found this roll of uh, Chevy parts right down here. Chevy repair kit. What is that, Dad? That's a Chevy repair kit if I ever saw one. Yeah. Well, there you go. I'm gonna throw it in the back of the truck because uh, you never know when I might need to help a Chevy, help, a Chevy out. help a Chevy on the side of the road. <laughs> so one of the main reasons we are pulled over in this uh, rest area right now is just to give the truck a little break. This is the first hill. Uh, it's a pretty good climb once you go around Turnigan Arm. This is a pretty heavy load for the truck. Um, it's doing well, but I just want to take it easy. I don't have a gauge or anything to tell me the transmission temperature, uh, my exhaust temperature, turbo temperature, all of that. I'm learning that stuff as we go. I'm just going to take my time, let things cool down, and uh, take it easy on the trucks. All right, guys. We are at our RV spot. The drive went great. I feel like the truck performed really well. Um, I only pulled over that one time just to kind of give the transmission a break, but I really don't think it even came close to overheating. That was my main concern. The little, little uh, kind of a bummer, the first come first serve sites in downtown Seward, every other site was um, ribboned off or labeled as unavailable. So they're trying to keep social distancing between campsites. Every other campsite in that spot was reserved and we didn't we weren't aware of that. We've been coming to Seward for years and it's always been first come first serve pay at the station at the campground and uh, it's not that way now. All the sites have to be reserved online. So we didn't know that. Uh, that's our fault for not looking into it and uh, so we could not stay there. We drove out to Miller's Landing. It's just three or four miles out past Seward. There are some sites out here. So we've got uh, just a little fire ring here. The spaces are uh, separated by just big logs and uh, a nice little creek right behind us. I love the sound of running water. And we're not but 200 yards from the bay, which is directly below those mountains over there. We've got our site. We're gonna settle in. We're gonna probably get a fire going roast some hobo pies. We've got all kinds of fixings for the campfire. Let's see what Jack has to say. All right, you ready to camp? I'm ready to camp. You're Let's go to... get some fish, all get right. some smoke in our eyes, swat some mosquitoes, and rough it. That sounds like a plan to me. Yeah. I mean, that's what camping's all about. That's right, we're gonna be roughing it here. Well, you can see how bad we're roughing it. Oh yeah. We've got, we got a little bit of space there. I haven't figured out the square footage, but it's quite a bit. <laughs> and it's definitely comfy. Is that part of it? What That's are we looking cool. at, Dad? Um, it looks like a uh, peanut butter and jellyfish sandwich. That's a, that's an Alaska peanut butter and jellyfish sandwich. They're the best. Next to the worst, they're the best. What, what is that, is Emma? Jellyfish. What is that? Jellyfish. Jellyfish. Um, Seward, the town of, is right over there, over my shoulder, and the tide is out, as you can see. We've walked along, seen a few of these jellyfish, and uh, we're just enjoying the sights, the sounds, the smells, 
it definitely smells like a, you know, like a harbor town. That uh, rotting fish smell. No, I'm joking. It's better than rotting fish. It's kind of that salty, breezy mountain air. And that's what you get in Alaska with these, these great mountains, these fjords that, uh, that dip right into the ocean. I mean, it's so cool. It's the best of both worlds. You've got salt water, you've got epic mountains. What do you have, Peanut? Seashell. Can you show Daddy? Oh, that's beautiful. Is that a seashell? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Hat. Is it your hat? <laughs> show Daddy again. That's amazing. That's beautiful, Peanut. Oh, nice hat. <laughs> Perfect. Are you having fun? Good. Much Marshmallow, she said. Hey, Joseph. Watch your feet, kiddo. Joseph, why didn't we come down this way? Where's our camper? Oh. I hope you get paid by the steps, girl. Oh. Can, you, can you see our camper? Oh, oh okay. that's where our camper is. think of your chair? Do you like your chair? Look at that, it's just like daddy's. You got him. What do you have, Emma? Is that yummy? So, what dad and I are doing right now is we have purchased these broomsticks. They're actually uh, more like painter sticks. They're like an extension for a, uh, a paint roller. They were very cheap at Walmart. No finish on them, just wood. And uh, we took the stickers off. And now, just trying to burn the residual glue off of there. And we're gonna work on some broomstick pies. You guys have seen that if you've watched this video here. I'll show you a little bit more in this video. All right, so Bonnie is going to demonstrate how to start the broomstick pie. You start with a broomstick, make sure all the sticker stuff is off. You take the biscuit, you slowly stretch it over the end. There you go. Uh-oh, we got someone taking the stick. Are you wanna help, Emma? So this is a fiasco. Essentially, that's what you do. You take, uh, and this is not sponsored, but you take Grands, Pillsbury Grands biscuit. Southern home style is what we went with. You don't want too much butter in there. And then you roast it like this. And you want it to be a, a low and slow roast uh, so the inside will cook. If you, if you burn the outside too fast, get it browned up, uh, and the inside doesn't cook, then it's all doughy. Maybe you like that and you can do that, but uh, that's what will happen if you cook it too fast. So you wanna go low and slow. So then you'll, then you'll end up with this and it's hollow for the most part and you can fill it with any kind of pie filling and then you can layer it with some pudding what we did was we just bought some of these uh snack pudding cups vanilla seems to be a good combination with this pie filling stuff And you can do as much or as little filling as you want. I'm all about the filling, so I load mine up. And obviously, top it with a little whipped cream. Or a lot of whipped cream. And there you go. You've got your pie. All right, what we got? What we got going here, Dad? Uh, what we have here is a failure to do marshmallows right. The process, the finished product. 
Let's top this sucker. Mmm. Look at that chocolate melting, oozing. Where are we, hon? Coffee shop. <laughs> Coffee shop. Coffee shop. At Resurrect Art Coffee in Seward. You know we have to stop here. Um, if you've watched this video right here, you know this is one of our favorite spots in Seward. This is our first stop this morning. We had a great night. Good, uh, good campfire treats and some s'mores and that kind of stuff. Hi, we are just at a rest stop on our way home from Seward, taking a little walk, stretching our legs, enjoying the scenery. We're gonna have some lunch. Uh, I'm just right along. I'll eat the lunch though, that's for sure. So we didn't end up doing a whole lot in Seward. We were gonna get fishing licenses and a few lures, but talking to some locals, the silver salmon, the coho, were starting to run but just at the beginning stages of it and not many people were being successful and the limit was only one fish a day and we just decided not to get uh, fishing licenses. We took Emma down to the beach, we played a little bit and just enjoyed the weather. We enjoyed a good campfire and now we're on our way home. But this drive, like I've said before, is one of our favorite parts. It's just an incredible drive. Uh-oh, I'm being hollered at. <laughs> I'm walking too fast. Here's our traveling partner right here. Can you say hi? Hi. <laughs> yeah, so we've, we're, uh, we have no bear protection. We know that there are bear in this area. What do you mean but that's, bear protection? I'm here. No, that's right. My bad. Yeah, Grizzly Jack. They say, uh, talk loudly and carry a big jack. That's right. That's right. A handyman jack would even be better. All right, so we finished our trail, you know, and it's, uh, I'm an experienced Alaskan and I was traipsing off there without any bear protection. We already talked about that. We had Jack with us, so that's, that's right. good. Um, we did see, this is the, uh, we're back at the rest area here. Um, this is the little reader board with all the information on it. And, uh, you can see that bear scat right there. Um, it's older bear scat, but the, uh, the thing that Jack and I were talking about, uh, any animal dropping, you know, animal dropping 101 thing you need to know. Just because it's older doesn't mean no animals are there. That just means it came from an older animal. That's right. And the term bear scat is an important term. Bear scat is when a bear is scared and he takes off fast. That's what bear, bear scat is. That's what he leave, leaves behind to let people know I'm scared. So you heard it here first. Don't pay attention to anything we just said about about bear safety and all that. Um, I'm joking even. If you take a look closer look at this stuff, it's uh, it's charcoal briquettes. <laughs> so we just did that to test you all and to make sure you're not listening to us for uh, for this bear talk uh, 101 bear scat uh, animal droppings 101. Go to your local officials, go to books, go to any place but us. No, we're not, we're not gonna go any further, that's it. We're done, we're done. Let's go try to find some berries. That's right, we've gotta do something sensible. We're still in this uh, rest area pullout. One of my favorite parts about um, road tripping, and especially with an RV or a motorhome, you know, or a trailer or whatever, is you've got a place to come in out of the weather, just enjoy the scenery, and that's what we're gonna do. Even with the slide out, you can kind of see we've got the slide outs in. We're not gonna put them out. Um, we can still access things. Bonnie's getting into the fridge, getting out sandwich makings, and we're gonna eat yeah. lunch. We're just gonna sit down and enjoy this view that we have out here and enjoy some lunch on the side of the road. <clears throat> then we'll get back on the road and head home. It's one of my favorite parts about road tripping.
Yeah, take two. We're gonna spend the weekend. I am squinting so bad. I'm sorry about that. The sun is really bright. Let's not get into that right now. I'm a little perturbed. And then if you need me to be standing a short ways away going like this, I could, Joe. Yeah. All right, we're rolling. The Monte Brothers. <laughs>